Probably the most common question I get asked is what camera should I buy? If there was a magical camera out there that could fit all your needs and still be relatively affordable, I would be over the moon. But each camera out there has different pros and cons, so I'm going to walk you through the list of things to look for when buying a camera for your specific shooting style and needs, because some people might need different features in a camera depending on what they're shooting. So let's get into it. The first thing to look for when buying a camera is price. I'm going to break it down into four different pricing tiers for you. Beginner, intermediate, advanced, and pro. The price range for a beginner camera is anywhere from $350 to $1,000. Please don't buy anything less than $350 because it probably won't do a very good job and you won't have a lot of tools that you'll need to get great looking images. Even when you do have a beginner camera, only plan on having that camera for a few months to learn with until you can start getting some paying jobs with it and can afford a nicer one. The intermediate tier of cameras will cost anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000. These are cameras that you'll feel comfortable with to get paid work from, and they'll have pretty much all the features that you need to get great images. The advanced tier of cameras will cost you anywhere from $3,000 to $6,000. These cameras are what most freelance filmmakers use and will get the job done for pretty much any job that you'll have. And the final pro tier of cameras will cost anywhere from six to $60,000. If you have more than $60,000 to spend on a camera, I'd recommend you franchise a Chick-fil-A or something. But don't worry, if you use the principles taught in this course with time and effort, every single one of you can get there. I started out with a beginner camera and I worked my way up, going through almost all of those tiers until I was able to afford a pro camera. My recommendations for a beginner camera would be either a Canon SL3, a Canon M50, or a Canon 80D. For an intermediate camera, I'd recommend either a Panasonic GH5S, a Canon EOS R, a Sony a7 III, or a Blackmagic Pocket 6K. For an advanced camera, I would recommend either a Canon 1DX Mark II, Canon 1DX Mark III, or a Canon C200. And for a pro camera, I would recommend a Red Dragon X, or if budget is no issue for you, a Red Monstro or an Ari Alexa Mini. And if you're trying to get a good deal on a camera, there's nothing wrong with buying any of these cameras used as long as the camera is still in good condition. The next thing to look for when buying a camera is the max resolution that it shoots in. You will at the very least want a camera that can shoot in 1080p. 1080p is still the standard, but probably won't be for much longer, so if you do have a camera that can only shoot in 1080p, eventually plan on upgrading to a camera that will be able to shoot in 4K because I think that that will soon eventually become the industry standard. Number three on the list is low light capabilities. The cheaper cameras won't be able to do very well in low light, so keep that in mind. Most Sony cameras are great at shooting in low light, but they lack in other areas which we'll talk about. But make sure that you see test footage of the camera that you're wanting to buy in low light conditions to see how it holds up. Number four on the list of things to look for is color science. Although Sony cameras do great with low light, they don't have great color science. Canon cameras, on the other hand, have great color science and produce some of the best skin tones out there, whereas the skin tones of Sony cameras sometimes look too green and not natural. Next on the list is dynamic range. This is measured in stops. The more stops of dynamic range a camera has, the better it is. Dynamic range has to do with how much detail is captured in the shadows and the highlights of an image. So if you've ever taken a video with your phone up against a bright window, you'll notice that it's either way too bright or way too dark. If your camera has good dynamic range, it will capture detail in the shadows as well as the highlights. Moving on to number six, which is slow motion capabilities. If you're wanting to shoot slow motion, I really recommend that you get a camera that does at least 1080p at 60 frames per second. The cheapest camera that I know of that does this is the Canon SL3 or the Canon M50. The Canon T3i, which is the camera that I started out with, only does 60 frames per second at 720p, which honestly doesn't look that great. The next thing to look for is battery life. This one isn't such a big deal because you can always buy extra batteries and with some cameras you can actually buy a battery grip that can attach to the camera body and extend the battery life of your camera. But that's something to just keep in mind as you buy a camera that you'll probably want to buy a sufficient number of batteries to keep it going for however long your shoots are going to be. The next thing to look for when buying a camera is screen size. The bigger the screen is, the more you'll be able to tell if your image is properly exposed, in focus, and spot on as far as the colors go. Most beginner cameras have a 3 inch screen size, but there are some cameras like the Blackmagic 6K camera that has a 5 inch screen. I would personally recommend getting an external monitor that you can put on top of your camera, and those can be anywhere from 5 to 7 inches. Number 9 on the list of what to look for is sensor size. There are four basic types of sensor sizes. Full frame, APS-C or crop sensor, micro four thirds, and super 35. The size of your sensor will depend on the crop factor or how zoomed in your video will be. For example, if you have a full frame camera, a 16 millimeter lens will be 16 millimeters because there is no crop factor on a full frame sensor. If you have an APS-C or crop sensor in your camera, that sensor has a crop factor of around 1.6 
making a 16 millimeter lens more like a 21 millimeter lens. A micro four thirds sensor has a 2x crop factor, so a 16 millimeter lens will become a 32 millimeter lens. And a super 35 sensor has a 1.4x crop factor, so a 16 millimeter lens will be more like a 22 millimeter lens. Generally speaking, full frame cameras are more expensive, but there are a few exceptions to that, so this is more of just something to be aware of when you're buying a camera. Next on the list is autofocus capabilities. There are certain cameras that have software built into the camera that can detect a human face and keep that face in focus the whole time. Or they can have a square on the camera where everything in that square will be in focus. This is especially helpful if you're just starting out or if you're shooting subjects where you can move forward and backward and still keep them in focus the whole time. If your camera doesn't have autofocus, you'll have to maintain the distance from your subject at all times or else they'll easily get out of focus, which isn't impossible, but it's a bit harder to do. So right now, Canon cameras that have the dual pixel autofocus are the best in the market. And Sony is slowly catching up to them with their autofocus capabilities, but few other camera brands have good autofocus. Number 11 on the list is image stabilization. There are a lot of lenses out there that have image stabilization, but some camera bodies like the Sony a7 III have amazing in-body image stabilization, or IBIS, that make it easier to get smooth shots handheld without having to use a gimbal. And the final thing to look for when buying a camera is weight. Chances are the more expensive your camera is, the heavier it will be. This weight adds up fast if you're shooting with a gimbal all day, and most people starting out have said that they're usually super sore when they're getting used to carrying the weight of their camera. Your weight will also add up if you wanna buy a heavy lens, a battery grip, or an external monitor. So chances are that every time you upgrade your camera, the heavier your setup will be, so just keep that in mind. Once again, each camera has pros and cons, so just choose the one that best fits your needs now, and then you'll learn with it, and you'll grow, and then you'll eventually be able to move on to better and better cameras. Also keep in mind that a lot of how your image will turn out will depend depend on your lens. So make sure that you watch the next video that talks about what to look for when buying a lens for your camera. But that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.